Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Lately, my goal has pretty much been to upload any Wi-Fi battle I can get. Uh, if you would like to battle, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. Or you can always use the battle link code 2023-2022. That is how we're finding these 6v6 kind of Smogon OU battles. Um, today's match is against the boy Papa Hefe. He is also a fellow YouTuber. He makes insanely good content. You should definitely check him out. His link is in the description as well. You should go tell him that I sent you. And he is bringing an absolutely fire team here. He's got a lot of big threats. And it's looking like it's going to be a pretty good matchup. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into the match. So right from the start, I'm expecting him to lead off with the Glamora. He does toss out the Blue Dream, which is great. Because this allows me to be a little bit sneaky and toss out my fat ass Teletubby. So Glamora is a really interesting mon, because while it's predictable, it's still one of the best leads in the game. It has access to both Stealth Rock and Spikes, it's defensive, and it also has the ability called Poison Debris, which if you hit it with a physical attack, sets up Toxic Spikes. So this little dude basically wants to scatter some Poison Legos on my side of the field. He does end up getting up the Stealth Rock, as the Psychic would have knocked it down to, I assume it had a Focus Hatch anyway. Um, regardless though, indeed he has a fantastic matchup on this dude's team in general, so I'm actually just gonna stay in here expecting a switch. I'm gonna go right for, uh, one of my screens. I'm thinking he's probably gonna go into a physical attacker here, as he ends up going into the Claude Sire. Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poo comes in saying howdy ho, and I am fine with this, because I set up a nice little reflect. Plus, I'm not really worried about this matchup in general. I know that this thing can't really hit me too hard, and I still have the psychic coverage. Uh, I do want to kind of conserve this in DD because this team relatively does revolve around this thing's support. So I want to make sure that I'm safe around it. Um, but he actually just goes for the Toxic here. And I actually get a little bit of good information seeing how little that that Psychic did with the Psychic Terrain up. Uh, I can pretty much expect this to be a special defensive ass piece of poo over here. So um, being Toxic is annoying, but it does tell me he has some troubles with the Ndidi. He wants to be able to basically ensure that this thing gets whittled down eventually. Like I said, his team does not have... Uh, kind of the best counter to this thing, and DD is just always amazing. So he isn't going to end up going right for the Protect here, as he wants to kind of just kind of Toxic Stall here. But I say, fuck that shit, I'm going right for the Light Screen, and now I have my Dual Screens up. Um, unfortunately, I don't actually have the Light Clay on this DD. Again, I do have the Terrain Extender, so that keeps the Psychic Terrain around. As a couple more of my Pokemon on the team, kind of, it helps out the, the sweeps on my, you know, kind of Glass Cannons in the back. So... Uh, I now have dual screens up. I can just basically either decide to switch here or I could stay in and go for a psychic, but I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to conserve the Ndidi. I'm going to go right into the Armor Rouge. Now, the reason for this is if he decides to go for an Earthquake, I can take it easily. It's going to activate my weakness policy and my weak armor, and then I can just start going King Kong on some bitches with the Armor Rouge. So, he actually decides to switch out. We have a little double switch action going here as he goes into the String Cheese guy, Golden Go. This is a very scary Pokemon right now, and while I could stay in behind the light screen and try to set this thing up, I do want to try to conserve the Armor Rouge for later, because it's looking really good in the late game. Plus, I have a direct answer to the Golden Go, which is going to be the young Stanley Cup. I bring in the Ting Lu, uh, who is defensive as hell, plus with my ability, Vessel of Ruin comes out, weakens the special attack. Behind a light screen, not going to be able to do too much here. But he actually ends up switching as well, and we've got a little fight for some momentum going on here, which you absolutely love to see. So he actually ends up bringing in uh, the, the freaking Gator. The Skeledurge comes in, Reflect wears off, and I am finding myself, like, actually this is kind of fine. This allows me to finally set up my Stealth Rock. Uh, I've been trying to get that up to try to limit these switches as much as possible. He actually goes for the Will-O-Wisp and misses, so, you know, Willow mist kind of living up to its name. Um, if Tinglu does get burnt, I'm honestly not super worried about it, as I decide, you know what, I'm just gonna stay in here, go right for, um, an Earthquake. If he wants to will wisp that is fine. I basically just would like to whittle this thing down, because Skeledurge is a very scary Pokemon once it starts to set up some Torch Song. So, he actually goes for the will wisp again, and it misses, and at this point, I just feel bad. Like, that is just horrible luck, uh, and you absolutely, you know, hate to see it, but that's the, the reality of using will wisp so... I'm thinking now, I'm like, you know what, actually, I've dodged the Wisp twice. Apparently, Stanley's ass does not want to get burnt today, so I figure I'm just going to switch out here uh, and go right back into Telly. I can set up the Psychic Terrain again, and this thing cannot hit me with any Ghost moves, because I have the benefit of, for whatever fucking reason, being a part normal type. So, uh, and DD is not my best answer, but it's kind of the only thing I have against um, the freaking Gator here. So, he goes for the Slack Off, which you hate to see, because whittling this thing down, I thought I was in great position. Uh, but these things can be definitely very bulky. It looks like he is running more of a defensive set. And the only thing I can really do here is just try to start firing off some psychics. I know that the best thing he can do is just go for the torch songs. Um, and it's, while it's going to do a little bit of damage here, it's going to start to stack up as that special attack boost. So my main thought process here is basically using Ndidi to try to whittle this thing down to the point where I can then get a revenge kill on it. 
Um, I have the Psychic Train up for eight turns, and I figure I can make do with that if I need to kind of burn Indeedee here. So he actually ends up switching out once again. He's going to go back into Money Trees. And while that's not what I wanted to see, it's actually fine because the next time Skeletor comes in, he's going to take some Stealth Rock damage. And unless his Lazy Ass gets some Slack Off action, we should be okay. So I go for the Reflect, unfortunately not the Light Screen. Um, but it's good to know that at least the Reflect is going to stay around. And the Poison knocks me down to three. So that's actually fine with me. I do realize I'm probably going to have to burn the Indeedee here. Uh, as I don't really have an easy switch into this thing. It does allow me, however, to go for the light screen too. I am actually faster, uh, which is surprising. Then uh, that big ass booty I'm lugging around, I gotta have a fucking permit for that thing. But somehow, uh, towing that ass around, I'm able to still outspeed. So that's amazing. As the Golden Go is gonna take me out. And now, with Indeedee gone, I gotta start trying to make some shit happen here. So while losing in DD sucks, this does allow me a nice free switch into the boy Ting Lu, who in fact eats string cheese for breakfast out of his cereal bowl on his head. So. I go for the Vessel of Ruin up, He's obviously this thing's going to switch out, and there's not much on his team that wants to come in on an Earthquake. Now keep in mind, the main thing that I am worried about is going to be the Cyborg-ass Tyranitar he has in the back, because that thing can be scary, plus we have not seen a Terra on either side. So the, the battle can easily switch up here, and I just got to make sure that I'm kind of on the right side of it. So, he goes into Blue Dream, he knows that he can take the Physical Attack, activate the Toxic Debris, and now my ass has to step on Legos when I decide to switch in. Poison coated Legos might be the most devious shit of all time, but I am able to take care of the Blue Dream, and now he gets a switch into Young Bowser. This is probably one of the sickest new Pokemon. He does have this as the shiny as well, and I am afraid. I'm seeing this Earthquake thinking there's no way he just goes into this, allowing me to just click Earthquake, right? So I'm thinking, do I taunt? He's going to set up? I have no idea. I decided to just go for the safest play, which is the Earthquake here. And now, of course, he's going to go full Digivolve on my ass, and he's going to turn himself into, it turns out, a bug type, which is not ideal, considering I just clicked Earthquake, and I knew it had to be too good to be true. So now we have a bug type Cyborg Tyranitar over here, who now goes for the Dragon Dance. Isn't it plus one attack and plus one speed? I am shitting my britches over here. So um, obviously my Earthquake is now not going to do anything, and he just basically got that free boost. Um, you know, obviously Earthquake not doing anything, and now I do not have a switch into this, and it's looking like Stanley's gonna have to just kind of just uh, bite the dust here. So I decide to go for a taunt. Now the main reason for that is because if this thing gets up any more Dragon Dances, I will not be able to outspeed with my my uh, my Ace in the hole in the back, which is gonna be the Flamigo. So he goes for the Pin Missile here. Stanley is still defensive as hell because I do have that Reflect up, which is amazing, even at plus one. I'm able to take that super nice, and now this allows me to taunt. I prioritize going for the taunt over the damage here, because I can't really do much to it, and it's just mainly that, you know, with this thing not being able to dance anymore, it puts me in a way safer position. So, of course, I do not have much that wants to switch into this. I basically have to let Stanley go down, but I kind of did what I needed to do, right? It's, it sucks that I don't have this as an answer to the Golden Go later, but at least I'm able to limit what uh, old Iron Thorns can do to me here. So... Uh, down I go to the pin missile, and the light screen is now going to wear off. But, I do have the one absolute legend in the party, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the boy Flamingo. I come in looking like a boxing glove, aka just basically a Flamingo here. So who would win? One cyborg terrestrialized Tyranitar, or, hear me out, a Flamingo. I go for the Brave Bird, I'm able to outspeed because I am Choice Scarf, and that is going to take care of the Iron Thorn. So without the Scarf Flamigo on the team, I truly did not have a whole lot that wants to deal with that thing. And that is one way to take care of it. He did not expect the Choice Scarf Flamigo, and that uh, is amazing. So now he gets a free switch, goes into the Golden Go again. Of course, now I do not have much that wants to come in on this thing because I've lost my Tinglu. So I'm thinking that the only thing that can really switch into it is going to be the Tooth Fairy. Ready to bust some motherfucking teeth out <laughs> with my giant ass hammer um, if I can take an attack or two. So. Uh, I do take some Stealth Rock damage here. He goes for the Shadow Ball. Now we get to scout what type of Golden Go this is. I assume it's probably just Max Special Attack, as the Shadow Ball just does a bit much there. Um, but I'm also thinking, hey, Indeedee outsped this thing, and uh, I'm actually pretty damn quick, so I can just go right for the knockoff here. It does not quite kill this thing. But what I can do is pop his balloon. Not that that has any battle implications, but now this Golden Go just looks sad with his, you know, popped balloon over here. So... Uh, he does go for another Shadow Ball here that is going to take care of me, but honestly, the chip damage I was able to get uh, with the Tinkerton is going to allow the Grafiai to come in and hopefully take care of it. So, ET comes in. I'm going to soak up the Poison Spikes, obviously not too big of a deal. Um, however, I wasn't able to make, you know, this Grafiai happen like it's supposed to. It relies on the Psychic Terrain being up, 
This thing has the item called the Psychic Seed, which then pops upon switching into the Psychic Terrain, both activating my Unburden and giving me a special defense boost. So I'm not going to be able to rely on the strategy that this thing is built around, but I do still have the Flamingo in the back, and it's looking like that might be my win condition if I can disrupt a little bit here. So... Um, I really would like to get a Swords Dance off, but I also would really not like to take an Earthquake, so I have to go for the knockoff here, get as much damage as possible. I say, fuck your leftovers, I'm eating them now, and he just goes right for the EQ here, um, which is going to take care of me. So, unfortunate, Grafai did not, you know, get the sweep that I was planning for, but sometimes that is the way she goes, boys. You gotta, you gotta improvise every now and again. So, now I have to basically go into Flamingo and pressure this, uh, this freaking pooper over here. So... Uh, he knows that I'm Choice Scarf at this point because, of course, I was able to outspeed the plus one T-Tar. And I'm basically going to have to go for the Brave Bird here. So, Hanky does go for the Protect. I guess just wants to scout out what I'm going to lock myself into. That is totally fine. He does not have any leftovers. Plus, a Brave Bird is easily in range to take care of this thing. And keep in mind, his final two Pokemon after this is going to be both Skeledurge and uh, the King Gambit. So, he's actually going to end up switching out here. He decides to go into the Skeledurge. Uh, which is great. If it goes King Gambit, that actually puts me in a pretty uh, well, worse position here. But this Brave Bird is going to allow me to take care of the Fire Gator with the Clown Hair. And it actually, actually, the first one doesn't knock it out. But that's fine. We're going to overlook it because Flamigo is an absolute legend over here. I don't care how skinny his legs are. He's still going to outrun your ass and just knock your ass out. So down goes the Skeledurge. Now he gets a free switch. Goes back into Mr. Hanky, surprisingly. Um, maybe hoping that he is able to take a Brave Bird here, but it's looking like after the Stealth Rock damage, Flamigo is able to just clean up here. And that is... I'm, I'm proud of my little dude. Now, keep him... I actually have the wrong ability on this thing. I have Co-Star on it. I'm supposed to have Scrappy to be able to hit Ghost Types, um, but I just didn't have an ability patch. So, my dude's running his doubles ability in a singles battle, and that's he doesn't even give a shit. That's how badass the Flamingo is. So, the Protect... Uh, for no reason, basically just going to prolong the inevitable death of Poopsire here. And now he goes into his final Pokemon, which is going to be the King Gambit. Now this is the scariest thing of all time. This new Bisharp evolution has Supreme Overlord as an ability. Now that gives you 10% attack boost based off of how many Pokemon on your side has fainted. So he does his final Pokemon, you can do the math. I go right for the Brave Bird here as I cannot switch. I basically have to let Flamingo go down here, and then I have the Armor Rouge to try to make it happen. Um, Brave Bird obviously does nothing. Would have been real nice if I wasn't Scarf there uh, to just go for, you know, the, the close combat. So he actually goes for the Iron Head, which is amazing. And now I'm thinking, okay, the Crimson Chin is still alive, and boys, if this boy is still out here, there is still a chance. So I'm really hoping that this thing is, in fact, Choice Scarf. I can go for the Armor Cannon, and I can knock this thing out if it is. It goes for the Iron Head, tells me it is Scarfed, I'm able to live it thinking, oh my god, all I have to do is get this attack off. Weak armor activates, and I flinched, which is absolutely insane. But what that does do is it allows me to now outspeed. With that speed boost, I'm able to outspeed the Scarf King Gambit. I can go right for the armor cannon, and it is going to knock it out. Um, so that is absolutely insane. He did mention if he would have gone for any other attack against the Flamigo, um, he actually would have likely been able to take care of the Armor Rouge. But he mentioned that he... Kind of just an oversight, not thinking that the Armor Rouge was the last Pokemon left. So, I'm telling you, if the Armor Rouge is alive, there is still a chance. If he had clicked Sucker Punch against the Flamigo, it would have been game over. But it made for way more of a dramatic effect <laughs> with the flinch and then the weak armor outspeed at the end there. So, regardless, super good match. Um, again, Papa Hefe is a fantastic channel. Go ahead and check him out. And leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. I do appreciate all the support. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.